Hey everyone, it's ACJ, and we're back with a, another Photoshop tutorial. Within this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to look at um, how to create these kind of meteor, meteorite, sorry, um, impact kind of effects uh, within Photoshop. So they're using really basic kind of uh, layers and layer styles, and they're quick and easy to do. Um, we This is a poster for a uni assignment, so I've had to create a poster and demonstrate proper editing and uh, kind of masking techniques. And I've kind of based this poster off Battle LA, the movie. Uh, whereas on the movie, they kind of have like these smoky kind of uh, meteorite kind of trails. Whereas I'm kind of going with a light, kind of light stream beam, kind of it burning up compared to the other one. Um, I quite like this effect itself. Um, I quite like it actually over the actual smoke. I actually tried some smoke trails and they didn't look as well. And yeah, this is a quite neat effect, so we're going to kind of go with this. So. I've had to create uh, other posters or other slides for it. This is a menu, a uh, DVD menu. Um, I had to kind of go with the same theme. So we still have these kind of meteorites coming down. And again, uh, another one with meteorites as well. So we're going to take this image here. We're going to remove all the meteorites and text and whatever. And we're going to kind of go over the basics of how to create it. So I've just got the actual image here. It's still got all the other layers um, that I've done to make it. A lot of adjustment layers. And editing. So we're going to create a, new, a brand new folder for all our meteorites. So let's so call it meteorites. And what we're going to do is create a brand new document um, for the actual meteorite itself so we can create it and, and dump it in. So we're going to create a new folder, a new website, a new document, sorry, by 700 by 500 pixels. It can be any size you want. Um, generally pretty big because you want to kind of work with inside the uh, we've got a document now, and we want to uh, put it black, so straight away put, um, change the background color black. We only need one layer, it doesn't matter if it's locked or not. Uh, so we want to now go up to Filter, Render, Lens Flare. Other than this purpose, I would never recommend using Lens Flare, but this actually gives you a decent effect. Lens Flare is kind of known within the design community to be really kind of old design shocking design tool and it's generally not used um, for whatever really since the 90s or 2000 design but anyway we're going to go over that so we want to kind of create a lens flare we want to put it on the 105 uh, millimeter prime lens and we want to put the brightness all the way down to about 30 between 10 and 30 percent depending on how big your document is so I'm going to put about 30 percent kind of roughly uh, Oh, it can be in the middle, it can be just straight off. We're going to have it so the uh, stream goes to left to right. So um, we're just going to have it roughly onto the left hand side of the screen so we can fit it all in. And that's pretty much it um, in terms of what the effects are. Now we, just, we can just add some wind to it so it kind of blasts it to the right. But as you know, with the lens flare, as these kind of dots around um, the actual, like the flare of the lens. If that makes sense. But anyway, we, we, you can leave them in and they kind of create mini meteorites. Um, but for now, I was going to rem remove them so we have full control over. So by getting a, a brush, a black brush, black soft brush, and literally just painting over it, that's all we need to do really. really. And because we're on one single layer, where it doesn't really matter what you do or how you do it, um, it's, not, it's not so much of a worry. So what we're going to do now is go down to uh, rent, set, go to filter again. Sorry, um, stylize wind. Now we want to put it on wind as as it's already done, and we want to change the direction from well, originally it's on right. We want to change it from left, so it's kind of going to to the right. Sorry. As you can see, it started to create kind of a blasting wind kind of effect coming from the uh, left to right. What we want to do is now duplicate that effect over and over and over again. We can do that by pressing Control F or we can go up to filter and click on this thing over here and we keep, just want to keep on doing it until it does not allow us to do any more okay so that's good that's good there and that's pretty much the uh, entirely um, the creation for the meteorites so you can kind of create different sizes different um, different like placements different angles and whatever you like that I literally just want to copy the whole document um, actually we want to so just select about that much of it. Make sure you get all the light trails in, otherwise it will look like it's been cut off roughly. I'm going to copy that. So Control C, or going up to Edit here and Copy. 
Literally, that's all we need to do. It doesn't matter about the black background, we'll get rid of that within the actual uh, thing. So we're going back to our thing, uh, back to our original document now. Within the meteorite folder, literally Control V or Edit Paste. And as you can see, it's completely just dumped it into our thing. Uh, and now you're probably saying to me, "What's well, got the black background around it? We could probably done an easier way." But literally, all we need to do now is go to the blending options over here, and set it to Color Dodge. And there you go. You've pretty much just got a meteorite effect already. And as it's a blending option, it interacts with the layers behind it. And because it's white, the original thing is white on our black background, the black will be disregarded and the white will be picked up. Depending on the actual background itself, so you see over here, when I, when I kind of go over the, the white part of the sky, it kind of flares up. When I get into the dark part of the sky, it kind of dwindles down. So we can kind of use it to our advantage and kind of create a very varied look with one single image. So what we want to do is now rotate um, this meteorite so it kind of fits in with the actual image. We can either by going Control T, which is the shortcut for transform, which we can do by going Edit, Free Transform. And then we have this bounding box around our image. We can quickly drag the corners around. And I kind of just want to roughly get it so it kind of lines up with uh, this impact that I originally created before. That's pretty much the crux of the whole uh, Oh, meteorite. So now we want to kind of just plunk it around and we want to duplicate this layer now. So by pressing Control J or right clicking and duplicating it, create a new layer. I'm just going to kind of manipulate these around. We, we can kind of put them around, scale them, different scales. Again, Control J, duplicating this one layer. You can uh, make brand new meteorites. I, I tend to kind of make brand new ones and kind of scale them together um, just so that it doesn't look exactly the same. But really, you can muck around with all this by moving them around the actual image as I showed before. Control J. You might want to make a little, a little one right next to it to show it's kind of breaking off, separating apart as it kind of goes into the atmosphere. And a couple more. So we'll just drag it in here, duplicating it. I have one over here, um, and then one more. That was going to go through our fire to kind of show that it's kind of breaking through the building itself. We might want to scale this one up slightly a bit. Um, let's rotate this one because it's slightly off. Now, to kind of create the effect that's kind of breaking through, we need to mask out the uh, middle section of the actual uh, meteorite. That's pretty easy to do. So, on the actual layer, it's probably best to name these layers as well because it can kind of, can kind of get hectic, sorry, with all these duplicate layers. So, on, on the actual layer of the meteorite going to the building, we want to go down to the layer mask, which is over here, add layer mask. And what this does is it creates a layer mask which we can mask in and out. So we're just going to quickly zoom in, control plus and control minus will zoom in and out. And we want to grab a, a soft, softish brush. Um, so mine's on 25 pixels right now and it's soft. And we want to put it onto black on our layer mask, making sure it's on our layer mask, not on the actual layer itself. And we want to paint literally over where it should be. And kind of roughly guess where we'd start appearing at the end. To me, that looks pretty good. And you can kind of, kind of go over it, add more. And it's really up to you. You kind of muck around with it and do what you want. It really varied, as you can see. It roughly looks the same, but you know, I've, I've changed some parts in the other one. I've kind of moved things around. Um, and it's pretty much up to you. And it works with most backgrounds. Like, as you can see here, this is a nice red, kind of reddish sky. Works quite well with that. And my original post quite quite works well. It works good so as well. Um, that's pretty much it. So it's up to you how you want to do it. And I've created some fire around it, which is pretty easy to do by slapping in some fire and masking it out as well. And that's pretty much, like I said, pretty much it. Um, I'm also pretty interested in actually making these posters into a tutorial as well. So if you're interested in that, just please comment so and I'll uh, see what I can do. And they're pretty easy to do using all all using non-destructive editing, so that means I can change the editing later on down the track, so adjustment layers, masks, so nothing's 
like set in stone. I can always go back and change it. And that's pretty much it. So if you like this, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Sorry, and I should have some more tutorials soon. Thanks, guys. See you later.